Welcome back, Shaloners, and welcome back, Selenators. Selena Selena Gomez fans, you guys got to come up with a better fandom name. How about No Go Gomezers? Because today, guys, I'm sorry, we're going to break it down about your little idol and why she's basically nothing more than a vital organ con man. And not just spill the tea on Selena and what's going on with her friendship with Francia Reza, but how we can spot users in our life repel them, and only keep good people around. But first, just want to remind you guys that if you want to chit-chat with me privately and talk one-on-one -on -one about an issue you might be having in your life, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO, and click chat to get connected right away. Also, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO, where I let you guys weigh in on the next video topics and connect that way. And listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every week, every place podcasts are found. So, Selena and Francia Ressa. And I have to pronounce her name that way because I literally don't know how else to say it because I had to Google to see how she pronounces it. And every time she says her own name, she says it like Francia Ressa. So in my like white suburban girl English, it's Francia Ressa. Is that right? I don't know. So I'm just going to say it the Francia way because it's like, it's so spicy and I feel like I burn calories when I let my tongue roll like that. I'm burning off the chicken wings I had for lunch burning it with Francia's name. But Francia, I don't want you to burn too much energy yourself because you're operating on only one kidney. And that sucks. It doesn't suck that Francia was selfless enough to give her kidney to someone who deserved it, except for the fact that Selena very likely did not. I talked about Selena before and holy shit, did the Selena stands show up like I'm afraid of them. Oh no, not an emoji. <laughs> God, get a life. And I always say, like, the irony of when, like, celebrity stands, like, mm, like, come after me. It's like, I am exactly the kind of person who you could actually benefit from. Like, my advice is precisely what you need above everyone else. Because my whole thing that I say is, like, we don't need to live our lives for anyone else. Not a boy. Not what our parents say. Not what your friends say. Certainly not to please a celebrity who literally doesn't know if you exist or if you live or die. But since we're talking about life and death issues, back to Francia and Selena. So here's what we know about Selena, because I've told you. And because if you're new to this channel, you might not know. I was a celebrity journalist. I ran a celebrity magazine for a really long time. So when I say, like, I know stuff, like, I know the things that we didn't even get to print. But now that I'm out, I can spill the tea. So Selena lost a kidney in 2017. Francia gave her her kidney. So selfless. And because Selena has lupus and ostensibly that's why she lost her kidney. When you have an autoimmune disease and you lose a vital organ, a lot of times it's because you're a drug addict. Because let's break this down. Selena, again, ostensibly has access to the absolute best medical care. Western, Eastern, new things, old ways, herbs, spices, 11 herbs in season, all of that. She also has access to nutritionists, dietitians, physical trainers, massage therapists, acupuncture. She should be healthy as fuck given her diagnosis. Like she, her whole life should orient around it. And look, I know it's not fair that she should have to. I know that. One of my friends has an autoimmune disease and she, I mean, her whole life is structured around it. She's vegan. She doesn't drink. Like she looks incredible, by the way. Like she's just like not even aging, which goes to show how aging those kinds of things are. You know, she lives so pure and she looks, she looks like Snow White. But like, that's how you have to act if you want to keep all of your organs. Selena doesn't really subscribe to this. Selena has been in and out of rehab, not for depression or anxiety or bizarrely. She's like, I'm in rehab for lupus. I don't, that's not really, okay. She's in rehab because she's an alcoholic and a Right? But she is. And eat, but you know what? Let's say that she's not. Let's say that she was just a good Christian bitch up until this and God dealt her a bad hand and her lupus in the light of an incredibly healthy and flawless, totally non-toxic life, she lost a kidney and her friend decided to give her one. Months later, just months later, she was spotted at a hotel in New York City. And I know because I broke this story. This is my story, so I know about it. She was spotted drinking. Do you know what the kidneys do? Do you know what kidneys do? They process impurities in your body. What do you think alcohol is considered? 
by your body? Do you think it's considered like, ooh, like kale, like basically just like kale and water? Or do you think it's literally poison? It's literally poison to your body. So are you going to take in something that has to go through the poison center that you just had put in your body? She's probably still on like anti-rejection medicine. The very least, probably antibiotics, you know, or like just, and she's out drinking. And here's what she had to say about it. Oh, she had something to say. Oh, is it the Four Seasons? Yeah. So she said this to Elle magazine. As far as my personal life, someone sees me having a glass of wine. I could give two shits. I'm not trying to hide. That's my life. What a slap in the face to her best friend. It's a lot harder, I've heard, to donate a kidney than to receive one. Like, the, I mean, the incision is huge, the recovery time is different, and you're down a vital organ. You are in the prime of your life. You're a young woman of childbearing years. You know, we don't know what causes infertility. We don't know what causes cancer. We don't know what kind of domino effect things like this have, but we can't tell ourselves that they don't have any, you know? I would give a kidney to save my mother's life, a ch my child's life. I don't have a child, but my dog's life if I could. And so great for Francia for being so selfless, but wow, she got conned. She got conned. There's no other way to look at it. If I read that quote from the person I gave a, a, an organ to, <sighs> oh my God. And now the whole reason we're talking about this now is because the two women are no longer speaking. So let's just let's just go back to this. Francia is Selena's BFF or best friend enough to give her an organ. Probably she got paid for it, but like, I don't know, man. I can't put a price tag on my health. Like, if you've ever been sick, like really sick, your whole world stops. There is, there is nothing else but that. Nothing exists. There are no good days, there's no normal bad days, there are just health issues. And like, I was really sick at one point and it's like, I will never stop being grateful for my health. I will never trade it for anything. I will never put a price on it, you know, but obviously, you know, Francia felt differently or felt confidently that either her sacrifice is going to be appreciated or she is healthy enough to carry for the rest of her life. And God, I hope that she is, you know, I mean, she doesn't deserve anything bad to happen to her, but Imagine not only reading that quote and knowing that Celine has been drinking, like you, you see someone drink once, that's probably not the only time they were drinking. If it was, Celine probably would have said that, you know, it was my friend's birthday. We cheers with a glass. I had one glass of wine. I won't, it's, I don't drink, but you know, every once in a while, my doctor said I can have a glass of red wine. She didn't say that. Someone's drinking. I could give two shits. Blah, blah, blah. By the way, Selena, the phrase is I couldn't give two shits. I couldn't care less, not I could care less. <sighs> You're a mess. So not only reading that, but then having this person cut you off. And I've also talked before about why Selena doesn't seem to have any friends. Where's Selena's squad? Why is she all alone? She is the consummate victim and she plays this victim card a lot. And it's like, I've talked about like her relationship with Taylor Swift and why Taylor kind of like dropped her because I think Taylor was really sick of the Justin Bieber drama. You know, as we have all gotten sick of watching our friend engage in like a toxic loop and you're just like, enough. At this point, you're both crazy. Enough. I've also revealed to you her incredibly, I, I can't believe how many times I'm saying the word toxic in this video, toxic um, situation with Jennifer Aniston. So Selena is just a mess and she's the kind of girl who will call you at all hours, <laughs> drunk, having a meltdown, whatever, whatever, whatever. And Jennifer Aniston, like bless her heart, is like, oh, let me help you, blah, blah, blah. Like good big sis, really there for her, taking her under her wing. The week Jennifer Aniston splits from her husband, Justin Theroux, who does Selena sleep with? Justin Theroux. I know it takes two to tango, I know. And like him, sleeping with his ex-wife's best friend or friend, obviously there's a lot there, but like as girl code, I mean the whole thing, it's just, it's unconscionable. And then you see this kidney thing. So what's the common denominator here? Is it Selena Gomez? Mm, that's interesting. That woman is a grifter. She's a grifter and she's a con man. She's manipulative and she's toxic. 
she might be like nice and she might be pretty. I don't really think so. I think she looks like a, like a large baby, like an adult baby, like Leo DiCaprio. You know, that's how he looks to me. I never thought he was hot. I'm like, you're just a giant child. Did you come from like a giant gymboree class? I don't know. But she is not a good person. And if you stand by this person to this obsessive degree, like ask yourself why, what do you, what does she represent to you? But you know what? I really don't, I could give a shit. If you're going to come here and be mean to me, I, I could see, oh, wait, did I say it? I could give a shit. Look at what you've done to me, Selena. You've influenced even my grammar. Shameful. I couldn't give a shit. I want to talk about what we can learn from this kind of toxicity, what we can learn from this dynamic. Because probably you haven't given a kidney to some bad friend, but you probably have done other things that in the back of your mind, as you were doing them, you're like, oh, this feels outside my comfort zone. This feels beyond my boundaries. This feels like I'm being used. And we all get used. No matter how smart you are, no matter how loving you are, which ironically can work a lot against you, we end up getting entangled with people who are grifters also. You know, they're emotional con men. They might not be like out to drain your bank account and out to snatch one of your vital organs. Give me all them spleens. But they're going to take something from you until there's nothing more to take and then they're going to move on. So how do we spot a user, right? Well, the number one way you spot a user is you smoke them out. And I've said before that like, well, I've done videos about boundaries and how I like to put up boundaries and I become addicted to it because then it routes out the bad people in my life. These secret Selena grifter types. Because if I say, you know what? No, I don't feel comfortable doing this one thing. I don't, we're not all going to wear matching outfits. I'm not going to go out and buy a whole new matching outfit for Kristen's birthday because that's what she wants. It's expensive. I think it's weird. I just don't want to do it. And if that girl turns and is like, well, Fuck you then. It's like, thank you. Honestly, thank you. Thank you for revealing who you are. So now I know. Now I can walk in the light of the truth about who it is I'm dealing with. And now I don't have to feel guilty because now I know you're not a real friend. You're a fake. You're a user. You want me insofar as what I can do for you. You want me because I'm a possession. I'm a means to an end. And I'm here for your use, your amusement, your needs and none of my own. Thank you for showing me that. So put up some boundaries in your life. You know, I think it would have been really interesting had Francia said like, no, you know, I can't give you, I can't give you a kidney. You know, what if one day my mom needs one? What if my own sister, I don't know if she has sisters, but what if my sister needs one? What if my child would need one? You know, life is really, really long. She's only like 30. She's going to live three times as long. Well, hopefully she's down a vital organ. I mean, I don't know. But like, if she had said that, I wonder what Selena's reaction would have been. And I wonder how many other people did say that. You know, I wonder how many people Selena went to. was like, I need a kidney. And I wonder if they were like, you know, girl, you know what I watched you do for the last few years? I haven't watched you like go on a meditation retreat in Nepal. I've watched you do things to undermine your health and actions have consequences. You're not getting my kidney. You don't get to blow through yours knowing what was at stake and then be like, all right, who's got a spare? <laughs> you all have two. I only have, I need one. No. And I wonder what Selena's reaction was because I think she lives kind of a lonely life, you know? I feel like a lot of people have pushed her away. Demi Lovato, I remember posted some meme. It's like swimming away from your bullshit. Girl, you know when Demi Lovato, the queen of the mess, is done with you. When Taylor Swift doesn't want you around. I mean, now she's like, we're back together. Taylor, it's because you have no other friends and you now need a squad. And you guys kind of both from a PR standpoint need each other. And it's like, we're girl squad. Nobody cares anymore, okay? That was so 2016, nobody cares. I don't care about your squad. I wonder what Selena's reaction was. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have boned Jennifer Aniston's husband. She's got some kidneys that are like showroom new. That girl has lived a very pure life. Lots of yoga and juicing. <sniffs> kind of shot yourself in the foot on that one. Or actually, maybe right about here. So putting up those boundaries is going to suss people out. If you have a friend who you think it's like, and it's like, we might not even conceptualize, like we're being used, we're being used. Like, because very rarely are people that like pointed. But 
Sometimes they are. If you put up a boundary, like I have this friend and she only texts me when she wants boy advice. And like, yes, of course, that's what girls do for each other. But like, it's to the point where I'm like, I can't talk to you now. My grandmother is dying. She's like, oh my God. Yes, of course. Yes. It's just that why won't he text me back? And I'm like, <laughs> really? Really? And like that just put it into such sharp focus. And it was, it, it, I was almost, I was again, lucky that that happened because it was something that I had been feeling for so long and feeling guilty that I felt this feeling guilty that what I feel like I'm being used. What's wrong with me? Am I just so uncaring that I just can't have a friend who needs anything? What does it have to be all about me? No. And had I put up a boundary sooner, I would have seen that. I would have seen, because when you put up a boundary, you see people balk or they rage. How dare you? You're so fucking selfish. What do you mean you won't drive me home from work 20 miles every day? Or they just blow right through them. They're like, uh-huh, yeah. Anyway, back to me. And that's a really significant data point. Because people, if you ask someone like, hey, are you using me for rides to work? They'd be like, no, no. And then they're going to turn it around and try to shame you. Why would you think that? Really? You literally think that about me? Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Look at, look at you gaslighting me. And that is a data point. Because you can't, like I said, you, you're you going to ask someone and of course they're going to say no, but then you have to watch what they do. Are they angry? Does the behavior continue? Do they guilt you? Do they twist around so you're a bad person? That's a sign that somebody is using you. Because if someone isn't, they will be genuinely horrified. Not at you, but at themselves. Be like, oh my God. I remember once, like someone said something like that to me. Like, I feel like you only text me when like, you want to come to one of my shows. And I was like, I am so sorry. I was like, I'm like, literally, I try not to text you a lot because I just feel like you're busy, you know? And I'm like, that's, that's no excuse. Like that, you're right. I should not, you're right, you know? And I have been, I'm sorry, I have to like put my hair up. I'm overheating under these lights. <sighs> Gonna cook up. Oh yeah. But I was like, I had a moment of pause and I was very sure to clarify what my intentions actually were and to rectify the situation and take steps so that they wouldn't feel like that in the future. And if someone doesn't, that's a data point. Also look at some other methods they might employ, namely guilt or pity. What do I always say? The number one thing a sociopath wants is pity. I'm not saying Selena Gomez is a sociopath. I think she's just sucks, but a manipulative person is always going to rely on either guilt or pity. Oh, fine. Fine. No, I'll just walk. Toward, no, I'll just walk. I'll just walk. I'll just walk in the snow through a bad neighbor. That's right. Oh, well, fine. I'll just die because I don't have your kidney. I'll just go ahead and die. I guess. No, no, Francia. I guess I'm just going to die because of you. There's usually zero personal responsibility or accountability. It's all turned back on you because human beings respond very well to a combination of guilt and pity very, very well. And you got to take a step back and be like, I am being gaslighted. I am being this, there is like an emotional Holocaust happening right now against me. And I need to take steps to repel this person. Because like I said, if someone truly does love you, like if I needed a kidney from someone and I asked and they said, no, I'd be like, okay, I, I understand. Of course, it's a huge ask. I understand, you know? And if someone did give me that, you know what? I just, I wouldn't be drinking. And if I was, I would have the decency to hide it. You have a huge mansion, Selena, probably a few of them. You can't do it behind closed doors like a normal person, like a normal alcoholic, drink at home like the rest of us. Pop open the bottles of Kim Crawford and get a straw. I don't care. But if you're caught in public, have the decency to lie because you apparently lie to everyone else about everything else. And now when you're like, this is me, I drink. It's at literally the worst possible time. I just, and poor Francie, you can't get that kidney back. It, there's no take, take backs, take backsies. No, it's not like a Groupon and you know, there's a, a window of opportunity. There's just not. So be careful what you give to people because you know, look, sometimes we think that our gestures and overextending ourselves is going to get, give us like this ticker tape parade in return. And I think this is something really important to talk about is like, if we're giving too much for, of ourselves, 
no amount of thank you is ever going to be enough because we will be so deficient. We will just need so much to fill it up and we have to take care of ourselves. And I saw a tweet the other day that said, if taking care of yourself means letting someone down, let someone down. Let someone the fuck down because you might only have to deal with their disappointment realistically, like five minutes a month. I mean, sit down and be like, how often really am I going to have to hear about how I let them down for my own well-being? Probably, honestly, not a lot, but you're going to have to live inside yourself 24 hours a day. And I tell you, and you know this, there is nothing more agonizing than being mad at yourself and full of regret, especially when you only have one kidney left. I want to hear your guys' story of getting entangled with a user or a con man and how you got out of it and what you learned and also your thoughts on Selena. And if you're a Selena stan, just do better. I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. Just pick a different idol. Would you like me to suggest one? Kate Middleton. She's great. Try it. Start there. For more, click like and subscribe for four new videos a week. And like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO if you want to weigh in on a video topic. And if you have a love question and want to talk privately, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. I'll see you next time. Bye.